What's up, guys? Welcome to another video. And guess who I got back? I got Miss Anita, Colombian Anita. She's back. And we get ready to do part two of Scopolamine. And how are you doing today? Um, it's good to have you again. Thank you for having me again, Tony. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. No. Especially, I see your shirt. I love it. Oh, thank you. Actually, <laughs> I got two. When I go to Colombia, mm -hmm. this is what I wear when I go to Medellin. And then I have another one. I have a white um, mm -hmm. Colombian, um, Colombian soccer jersey. So, yes, I love this. You know, I do love the country, too. I do love, I love the country a lot. Oh, you know, thank so you I, so much. I try, it's an I try, honor. I try, they treat me so well. They treat me so good. I wish I could be there for Christmas. I wish I could be there for Christmas. Yes, yes. So how are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm fine. Just trying to recover from all the eating from Thanksgiving. <laughs> you say eating from Thanksgiving, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're getting me ready for December. Yeah, yeah, December <laughs> just went right around the corner. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. you're so you're all straight for Christmas. You got everything. You got the Christmas shopping. Everything done for your son, or you still got more to do? Well, um, you know that sometimes during the year you buy a lot of stuff, so I'm getting rid of everything. So today I took like five packages of things that and toys and clothes that. I didn't really need. Okay. Okay. And so you yeah. got rid of a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, but I still have a lot to get rid of. But some stuff I will sell them and some stuff I will just give them away. Just give them away. Okay, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha. Like I mean, I'm telling you, I have like three camcorders, recorders. I never used. Oh wow, wow. <laughs> Why'd you buy why did you buy the camcorders for? You just go do some like content or something? Yeah, to do some content, but sometimes I bought it and then I forget I had it and then I bought a new one. Oh, okay. Uh, because they someone, outdate each other, right? They yeah, kinda... or my family were visiting me, so I would buy them for them, but maybe they found something else that they like, so in order to not spend more money on the luggage. Then they leave it and it's like. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, it's so nice to have you on the show today. So um, we're gonna talk about a little bit about um, scopolamine. That's like one of the biggest, biggest subject right now coming out of Medellin. So, um, well, you know, I'm a scopolamine expert too. I work in the medical field, so I know a lot about the drug too. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to hear from from your perspective. Um, so let's go back and let's go back to the butchera tree. I think that's where it stems from, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. yeah. El, we call it la flor. It comes from a flower. Okay. It's called uh, la flor del borrachero, like the drunken flower. Yes, the drunken flower, right? Uh -huh. It's like a white flower that is like upside down, you know? Yes. Yes. So. Uh, this flower you find it very easily in Colombia yes right? Even though it's controlled not to be plant around because you can take this plant you can take this flower it's as easy as um, smash it or squeeze okay. it I don't know how to say it and put it with alcohol and then let it uh, let it dry in the sun and then it will create a powder oh wow and the good, the good thing, no, the bad thing of this powder is that whatever you just need just a little bit, and with that a little bit, that someone could blow on you with um, how you call this spray like like a mess uh -huh, with an spray uh -huh. or that blowing on you, or they put it on your drink, mm. you lost your whole uh, willpower you become like a zombie so if anyone tells you like if if someone blows on you or give you some scopolamine uh, they can tell you like hey 
after this we're gonna go to your home you're gonna get all the cards and then we're gonna go to the bank you're gonna say that you need all the money from your bank account okay and don't okay. don't say anything that i'm waiting for you so the person just do it they just do it uh, it's like it's like it's like having a zombie or someone that uh, right. get all of your orders you know um it was it was even known that in the past uh, this scopolamine was used by the cia yes uh, the only thing yes. is that it was bad because also came with some hallucinations mm -hmm. right And the worst part of this is like it could take seconds to make uh, an effect on your body. And also with one gram, you can kill a person. Yes. Even more, right? So if the per if the person that gives you the scopolamine uh, get approached to you and they put you more of the doses, you could die from a heart attack. Yes. Or even stay like crazy. And, and it's a big trauma because once you have it, um, you are very disoriented, confused. Uh, some people in Colombia, when they got it, uh, sometimes they have been dropped after they've been stolen. They have been dropped in the street. Yes. And they are trying to cross the street or something. And people don't know if you are crazy or what is going on with you. You don't mm -hmm. remember anything mm -hmm. and yeah it could be uh, and anyone could be um, a victim so usually for men they use them for men and women and elders they use it to uh, steal them for young women or uh, or something they use it to rape them that's and it has been in a lot of uh, has been used a lot of years in Colombia okay The difference is that before it wasn't used on tourists. It was something that was used from criminals in high class areas. Okay. Um, or for for criminals who wanted to take advantage of a pretty person, a handsome oh. man or a pretty woman, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's why. Uh, We also need to talk about the safety tips to avoid be the victim of the scopolamine. Right. And also, like it will be interesting that you talk from your point of view and you are in the healthcare. Mm. Uh, like if you see a scopolamine in USA. Uh, um well scopolamine is um It's usually got, you can get it at a pharmacy through prescription drugs. It usually treats nausea and motion sickness. Like people go on cruises and sometimes they get motion sickness or they go to amusement parks and they get on rides. They have, they have um, problems with um, motion sickness. So what's, what's <clears throat> so, so, so scopolamine comes in 1.5 milligrams. It's like a trans, Derma patch is very, very small. And you put it like in the back of your ear, like right here. Mm -hmm. And it's like a slow release type of drug that goes into the body. But what people, what the criminals don't know is that scopolamine affects the central nervous system. That's what makes this drug so dangerous. The central nervous system has three major functions. Blood pressure, respiratory, and cardiac rhythm. rhythm okay? And what scopolamine does is a central nervous system depressant. Because it affects the brain. Mm -hmm. That's what makes this drug so extremely dangerous because if they give you too much what usually happens is is that when a person becomes unconscious 
the blood pressure drops, the respiratory drops, and the heart rate drops. And it drops to extremely dangerous levels. Because technically, I'm going to be honest with you, when they give you that much scopolamine, you should have an airway available at, in the hospital on the ventilator. That's how strong that drug is, especially the amount of doses that they give you. Because I don't think, well, let me ask you a question. Do you think these people that give this drug to the foreigners and to other Colombians, do you think they have an idea on really that they play a Russian roulette with people's lives? They definitely know, but they just don't, they don't care. Uh, usually it's very poor people I'm so sorry I hear noises in here oh, it's okay it's, uh, it's like criminals like very poor people that are criminals their whole life that they are raised into these criminals behaviors since little or criminal organizations So when they go for you, um, they they don't care. I mean, if the the fact that they are stealing you, they don't really care about you. Like they, you cannot ask for morals to an stealer or a or someone that is giving you something in your drink or mm -mm. like there is no morals. I'm sure they don't care. <sighs> why they would they are putting you already in a difficult position just to steal your money but you know that there's a, a bible scripture that says what does a prophet if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul you know what i'm saying because the, i guess the part that i don't understand is that i buried my aunt about three weeks ago, about a month ago. Well, I think it's going on three weeks. Okay, may she rest in peace. And we went out to the cemetery and we buried her. I mean, she, you know, she was a great aunt, great person in my life, you know. And when I was at the cemetery, you seen all the other graves out there, people that when they were born and when they died and everything like that. But one thing I know is that nobody can take nothing back with them when you die. You can't take nothing back with you. So I guess what I don't understand is that does material things really mean that much to them to be able to drug you that way? You know, I, guess, I, don't, know. I don't know. Well, we have to understand that uh since the 80s we have been or before a, a little bit before the 80s right Colombia was starting to suffer a lot of violence and even though in some con in some states are very kind uh, Colombia has been in civil war since a lot of time ago yes uh -huh. even if they signed the peace which I think that is ridiculous you talk about the you talk about the park right yeah okay even if they signed the peace that was a lie but we are not gonna go through that um like there is a still violence and you cannot i mean you can there is people that was raised into that environment there is people that okay. has been since always or grew into that environment Okay. You can find families that have been raised uh, to be good, even in the middle of the poverty. Mm -hmm. But you also see a lot of rich people in Colombia who are cold blood stealers and killers. Like you, you never know. The thing is that these people exist in the world, mm -hmm. that they are wired this way. And the only thing we can do is to protect ourselves. Uh, if someone is good with you in any in any country, and I say in any country, someone is good with you, yes, appreciate them. Be good as much as you can be, but also you have to learn the signs 
or I, I would say you have you have always a need to learn how to read people and mm. be a, a street smart okay because being good doesn't guarantee you that there is people that that is not gonna harm you mm -hmm. so you can still be good but you have to be cautious you know you you have you have to read people sometimes when someone approached to me i already know this person likes me or don't like me or this person is lying or this person is being honest in this sense or this like and this is something that experience gives you right right uh, but i mean i i don't to be honest i don't feel bad about it i i feel good that i actually god gave me or give us the opportunity to learn this stuff to defend ourselves and to give it to our kids which is what i'm gonna teach my kid like for example do you remember shanquila the soap talk case that is going on the lady that was murdered in mexico by her oh. friends oh yes 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 uh -huh. yes yes yeah so she was apparently she was an amazing woman and she still had so many people surrounded her that were plotting against her until they murdered her so i mean it's very important to read people and to know who mm -hmm. you surround with even with a stranger you need to learn how to read them mm -hmm. so we have like some security tips in Colombia to avoid this or to right. um, to lower the risk. Mm -hmm. So for example, I don't know if you have been in downtown of Medellin, you see some guy throwing like flares very fast. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen like that they look like crazy yes. doing like with the flares? Uh, I remember whatever I pass around them, I will just cover my mouth and I will hold my breath okay uh, to avoid because because someone asking you for an address or giving you a fly, a, a flyer uh -huh. uh, they could blow some scopolamine on you or oh. spray or if someone asks me an address I say i'm sorry i'm hurry up and then i go very fast very fast or uh, yeah, like that's why also in Colombia people is very kind but it's more difficult to get into their houses you know okay um we tend to get into our houses people that we innerly see that they are good like like exceptionally good or innocent or like very close friends of us that we have been seeing for years okay but it's very important like for example for us to it's very rare that we don't know our neighbors okay in usa you could be years and you don't know your neighbors okay true in colombia everyone knows your neighbors and even the neighbor will say who was the person that came into your house that day who is that person like we even ask between each other okay uh, also I don't know if you have seen this, but in some neighborhood or in most of the neighborhoods, we have the phones of, of the police officer that works around the area. Okay. To call him or her directly in case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. We know an, our neighbors and it's very important to know our neighbors because if we are at some point in a difficult position, the neighbor or your friend can tell you exactly this person usually acts like this or is not, something is going on. So your neighbor will approach to know what is going on, to know if you are okay. Mm -hmm. And also uh, we have a system too, or where I used to live, even, even in the countryside, where one of the neighbors in the block will be like the person that watched the block And if they see an strange movement, they will go and knock on your door to know if you're okay. Or if they see something weird, weird 
they will call the police of the block. Okay. To go and see if you're okay. Also, uh, one of the most important things, as, as we say, like try to avoid contact with strangers in the street. When mm -hmm. you go out party, never ever, and this is a rule, never ever accept a drink from mm -hmm. someone that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. If you ask for a drink, we drink it right away. We don't leave them in the tables. Okay, yeah. We drink it right away. If you are a male or a female, whatever, and then someone very pretty or handsome approach to you, um, don't receive from their own drink. Don't turn around and like, because even when turning around one second, someone could put something in your drink. So I, I would advise never um, never get distracted from your drink or your food when you are uh, going out. Um, are you safe at, um, what about at restaurants when the waiter comes and bring you drinks? Are you completely safe when the waiters bring your food to you? You should be okay. Oh, the waiters? Yeah. I, to be honest, I have never seen a case when a waiter does that to a person. Okay, okay. Because I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to a lot of my subscribers. Mm -hmm. It's getting to the point where, okay, it's like when they go visit Colombia, like Medellin, they're completely paranoid about everything because they hear about this thing about scopology. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Um, It's like you just don't trust nobody because like okay like for example i have friends in managing who i've known for years and i have heard stories of guys that have dated women for years for years and still got scoped by the same girl and they thought they knew them. they took them on vacations they gave money to their kids they did everything right And then it's like, it's almost to the point where you just can't get comfortable. You know, it's like, you're constantly like watching over your back. You know, you you got your drink in front of you. You're sitting there like this with your drink cover and stuff like that. So, um, <clears throat> so another thing was making, making it more scary to go back to Medellin to some of my friends are telling me is that the increase of deaths is starting to happen. You know, people are dying, actually dying. And that situation that happened with um, the Asian guy, Paul uh, Nguyen, you know, I'm talking about the 27, he was only 27 years old. And What was his a, name? His name was Paul Nguyen. He was Vietnamese, American Vietnamese. Matter of fact, um, I wonder if I can show you this picture. Kono and how you write it? It's P P A U L N Y G E N. Let me see if I got this picture right here so I can show where, you. Where where was he from? America. He was on um, Vietnamese America. Let me see if I can bring up this picture so you can see him right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. No, no you, you can't see it. Okay. I'm gonna send you a, um, a picture, but his name was Paul Nguyen, P-A-U-L, his last name. Paul. Yeah, N-G-U-Y-E-N. And he graduated from... Paul Lugan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, isn't it, the famous YouTuber? Yeah, yes, that's the one that was killed. I mean, what well, died. He went to University of Southern California. He just graduated from college. And he just wanted to meet a girl for a date. But when I, the information I got that he was supposed to meet this young lady, and he met her on Tinder, and it's supposed to have met for a date. But that's the that's the common denominator yeah. that we were talking about the last time. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not that it's Colombia; it's becoming very risky. Escopolamine has been there forever. 
mm-hmm. is the kind of tourism that has been going to Colombia. Okay. That guy, the passport world, uh, bros, passport bros or guys or something like that. Yeah, passport bros. I heard that before. <laughs> passport bros. <laughs> How is it called? <laughs> you said it right. Passport bros. Yeah. I think they, I don't even knew them and I think they already have me blocked because I could not find them on YouTube. Okay. Is, you ain't missing nothing. But, but, um, all they have this in common they go to colombia to have sex and have fun to uh-huh. have dirty stuff mm-hmm. don't expect women uh, or mm-hmm. or criminal organizations not to take advantage of you okay. even in usa even if usa if right, you call right. a prostitute you run the risk to go to be stolen to be threatened Mm-hmm. And also the, the pro, or, or to even be arrested because prostitution is illegal in most of USA, right? right. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. So it, it's not that. That's the thing I feel angry about, because everyone wants to blame Colombian and Colombian women, and they are bad. It's risky. No, the risk has been always there, and is the same yes, yes. or similar than it is in other countries. If you go to another country, uh-huh. you just go to a Tinder day because Tinder is to hookups, is to have intimacy. Yeah. And you say you should avoid those type of um, uh, um, dating on Tinder and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so right, we right. we all know that here in, in USA, Colombia, and in the Patagonia, <laughs> the the Tinder is an application to find women or men to have. You know, <laughs> to applaud. Right. Uh, so if you if you bring someone that you don't know and a stranger to your home, it's the same. You bring you are bringing an stranger to your home, even worse in a country that you are not from. Right. That you don't know the laws. Well, I understand that, but what I'm saying is, the scopolomy is starting to happen to people to two people that people that they do know. Okay, I, I, I understand. But they, where are these guys? I mean, where where are them? They don't speak. Where is the police? Like, well, where are the reports? The, the the passport words. Even if it was something that someone they don't know, mm-hmm. they came out to say what happened. So we know that the reason was they put themselves in a situation of risk with okay. someone that they were trying to hook up. Okay. Believe me, Colombians don't want this class of tourism. We don't want men or women going there to just hook up or mm-hmm. sleep. Mm-hmm. There will be someone that will want to take advantage of that. No, no one likes to be sexualized. Right. I, I don't think no one likes to be sexualized. Right. No, no, any woman in any country. Right. Right. Uh, so if if you are coming there, that someone will take advantage of those conditions. I agree, but what yeah. about? But what about? Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh-huh. My first time in Medellin, my first time. It's like there's there's. Uh, I, I I agree with you saying because on my channel I don't um um condone you know prostitution or or hookups and doing drugs when you go to Colombia. I do not allow that type of stuff on my channel. I go down there to have a good time, you know, um, have a good time learning the culture, the people. Oh, something's going on here. And my other question, Mm -hmm. you have been there multiple times. Yes. You have been never been a Spopolamin. Oh, but I, um, I, I was very careful about my drink. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like um, I, I use safety protocols to protect me from getting scope because, like I said, I'm not saying everybody's bad. I'm not saying um, Colombia's bad. But what I'm trying to tell you is that I've heard stories of guys who actually not picking up, um, you know, pros or anything like that. I mean, these were just regular women i mean the ones that they met they went out a few times they went on vacation 
they done things together and this one that you would think that was your girlfriend and they end up getting scoped anyway you know so it's, but where are these guys where are these guys I mean, people, Why they don't come out uh, to talk? Do, do we know most of most of the scopolamine incidents is not even talked about? What you hear is is a very small percentage. Most of them are too embarrassed. They don't want nobody to know what happened to them, so they just keep it a secret. And some of them are afraid of going to the police because they think that the the people that did this to them may come back for revenge or something like that. You know, so that's why most of these cases is not even talked about. What you hear about the guy that I just told you about, the 27-year-old, this is just one out of many that has been scoped that you don't even hear about. And don't get me wrong, I, just, I, I agree with you 100% about um, going down there for the wrong intentions, you know. But I'm going to tell you, my first time in managing it was women coming at me in all directions they was coming at me I, it was it was so overwhelming it's like i said okay okay just too many of you are coming at me at the same time let me just relax let me just chill because one thing they wanted from me they knew i was a tourist they knew i had money and they wanted money from me And they were just sending me pictures, videos, everything. Like, hey, baby, what you doing? What you doing tonight? I'm like, well, you know. You know, I had to kind of like push them away. And then another thing that when foreigners go to Colombia is that the women there are just gorgeous. You don't see this in the States, what you see down in Colombia. So I think the men become almost hypnotized when they go down there. Yeah, the, the problem is that times. when you go to, to Colombia, that's that's true, and we have heard that a lot. One of the most beautiful people that you see in South America, uh, like most commonly beautiful, are Colombians and Venezuelans, I would say. Oh. Uh, I, yeah. I saw two Venezuelans, those ones have to be careful too, I heard. I yeah. saw two Venezuelans at the hotel. Oh, my gosh I was like oh my God. I mean you thought you you thought the Colombians were beautiful but when you see the Venezuelans I like oh my god and and the guys what they do is they become they become almost hypnotized because in Cartagena there was a woman there that was so beautiful I mean this woman had green eyes she had long hair She had on this dress. She was so beautiful that I couldn't even look at her. That's how beautiful she was. You don't see that. In, 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 the further you go to South America, you see stuff like that. <laughs> and God forbid if you go down to Brazil. <laughs> you know, so I think that's what happens. They become so infatuated with the, um, you know, with their looks and stuff and their beauty and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. That's what I think what happens. Yeah, but but I mean, like, we have, and, and that's exactly the kind of tourism we don't want. Because right. when right. you invest in a woman, mm -hmm. when you invest in a woman, or, or like guys that, or women that go there, women don't go there that much, to be honest. Uh, it's mostly men. Yeah, mostly the men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so, and they invest in a woman that is prostituting herself, or, or they just want to hang out to go to the disco or whatever. Uh, for us mm -hmm. as Colombians, is we told we call it uh, trash tourism. It is, it is. It don't do nothing for the economy or nothing. It doesn't do nothing for the people. It doesn't do nothing for the economy, yeah. Right, right, right. But as we talk in the, in the past interaction we had, uh, like we have the biggest diversity of flowers in yes. the world. Of yes, yes. And birds too. Or, orchids, yes. Uh -huh, yes. Um, we have the tour of the coffee. 
like so many stuff that aren't negative. Oh, it's beautiful, yes. That you could do in Colombia and you can get fun. I mean, it's... The botanical garden still is beautiful. You have a picnic there, you know? Yeah, no, or even the experience to get to study in the university in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, because it, the, or I don't know where I grew, when I started, I studied at the University of Medellin. And then also for some time, I studied in the, in the Sena, at the Sena. Uh, and the study culture is so beautiful. Yes, like, it is. The, the kids, the youngsters or, or whoever is studying feel happy to actually go to study. If you see the university or uh, at any time that they are studying, it's full of people mm -hmm. actively studying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like they like to be in there. They like to go to class. The class could start from 6 a.m. and finish at 10 or 11 p.m. Like, okay. and, and the quality of the, is, of the studies is great. Okay. To be honest, it's great and it creates like very uh, good professionals and thoughtful professionals in my thinking. Um, so um, also when you date or when you hang out or have friends that have these lifestyles that education is good. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I remember that the the our our edges were like going to um to natural places to visit uh, or to go to a tour to know more about uh, the processes of even of making a beer or whatever if you mm -hmm. go to tres cordilleras the factory beer you can learn about the process okay. and get fun at the same time like and then you you can find someone that is actually quality in your life okay okay and believe me, someone that is educated will never tell you, I need money for this, I need money for that, or will not look to make you feel bad. Okay. So if you go to Colombia and get to experience Colombia, why enroll in the university in an activity? Okay. Or go to salsa, like do other activities. Right, like to the get stuff, right. And just get to know, just, just, just let it come to you. When you say just let it come to you. Just be around good people, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, put yeah. yourself in, right. in, in, a, in good areas. I remember I used to go to dance salsa, porro, tango, and I, very, I made very good friends. In those times, I used to drink beer from time to time. I have never been a heavy. Uh, no, I have never drink be a heavy drinker, to be honest. But in my birthday, like like this, I'm telling you, in my birthday, there were young people from 18, 19 till 50 something. Okay. And I say, okay, let's play a game uh, with shots. I say that. My mom didn't want me to do this party because she thought that the party was going to go out of control. But all surprise, none of my friends wanted to drink nothing. <laughs> so we did it with water. Okay, okay. And she was so pleasantly surprised. She said, like, you very have good friends. So you, if you surround with high quality people in Colombia, they don't really need to have money because believe me i was living in a garage while i was a student in university and i have friends that were poorer than me oh wow you see lived in the garage you said yeah i used when i was a student okay uh close to the university of medellin uh -huh. there are they were simple houses and i used to live i used to live um and look how funny it is <laughs> i used to live close to one of the teachers of un of the university, he was a, a lawyer. He ended up being one of <laughs> one of my love boyfriends. I remember. Oh, wow! Wow! Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. But he was never my teacher. He was never my teacher. Okay. Uh, he was. A, I, I was a studying environmental engineer, and he was um, a teacher from 
uh, like a lawyer for PhD, not even for under, not even for bachelor's or undergraduate or nothing. Mm -hmm. So then I, I was like trying to find something close to the university and the only available spot was in a house where the guy lived with his parents, mm -hmm. like 50 something, and he was taking care of his parents. Okay. And then he divided and the garage, he tried to build like a small room with a restroom and the garage. And in the garage, he built a kitchen and a small kitchen. So wherever it was raining, Mm -hmm. my living room got wet oh wow, wow, wow. <laughs> that's how it was and that 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 university is expensive for colombians yeah like, yeah oh yeah it's expensive. It's expensive right but my family and i were spending everything in in the in my education okay. so so that was more important so see you don't it's not and I never was like asking for money for foreigners to to uh, to live or for nothing. Like it's, right. it's the quality of person you are, you know. Right. So well, I, I always, you know, I've been in Colombia so many times, and the woman that I I met, because uh, you know I spent time in Barranquilla also, mm -hmm. you know, and. Every woman that I've encountered in Colombia, at one point, always asked for money. Like I had this young lady. I want you to listen to this. I but what does she does? What does she does? They're not working. They say they can't find work. They say that because I, you know, one thing about me, I don't look at the material things. You know, I um, because. You know, I make, I'm, I do pretty good what I do for a living. So I don't, I don't mind like helping out a person, help, helping a person. Cause you said, Columbia women believe that the man, the man should be the provider, right? You know what I'm saying? Provide and help, which I understand. But, um, but that is once you are married. Once, once you're you married, are, right, right. Yeah. They don't. Once you are a, a, a like a couple, they have kids together. It's different. But if you are boyfriend and girlfriend, yeah, you can help give a gift from the time to time, but you cannot treat them as your wife or your husband. I mean, so uh, as as I told you, she she's not a high quality woman. So why even date her? They always. It's like it's like if I try to date a guy who, mm, who doesn't have a job and doesn't have ambitions. Right. Like, even if uh, even even if it, I wouldn't. I want you to hear this message I got. Someone had called here. A young lady, um, she said that she needed she needed some money for um I want you to hear this, what she said. Let me see, I'm trying to find it for you. I know, come on. <sighs> oh my phone is acting up, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, let me see if I can find, I think I got it here. Just one second, let's see. Um, see if I can find it here for you. Okay, I think I got it here for you. Here we go. 
no capete que no me voy a ver. Yo estoy muy estresada. Yo no pensé que eso doliera tanto, que eso fuera tan horrible. She said she was very stressed that she wouldn't think that this was her, so hurtful for her, that this was so horrible. Yes. What is she talking about? She said she came down with COVID. She and what? She, she said she came down with COVID. Uh -huh. She said she was very sick and she needed money to get her um, medications. She didn't have it. But medications for COVID is the same than here, like basically just going through it. She said she needed, like, she showed me the prescription that the doctor gave her. And what um, did they prescri prescribe him? Um, I saw that, let me see. Let me see. She sent me a list. Let's see what she wanted. Um, let me see. Maybe I just had it. She said some Motrin. Motrin, uh huh. That's, mm -hmm. that's easy to find. <laughs> let me see what else she said that she had here. Let me see if I can open it up here. Yeah, ibuprofen. That's for headaches. Dexamexasonia. What? Yeah, but it's called Dexa, Dexamexasonia. I don't know what that is. I even never heard of that before. I think that that's for allergies. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Dexa. D-E-X-A-M-E-T-A-S. O N A. That's a metasona. Yeah. Yep. So she said that her mom didn't have the money. Ah. Her family don't have the money. That is that is a a hormone. It's like a corticosteroid. Yeah. And I noticed something else too. When I go to... It's to alleviate inflammation. Mm -hmm. She wasn't... Tell she was telling the truth. I'm going to tell you the reason why I know she was telling the truth. It's for allergies. Right. And not um, only that, not only that, I heard the CPAP machine in the background. You what? I heard this, uh, it's a special machine that you um, put over your mouth. It's like a machine that helps you breathe. It's called a CPAP. And you hear the machine go pss, 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 pss. It makes a certain type of noise. So I knew that she was alive. She was at home or, or at the hospital? She was at home. And she took the CPAP machine uh, with her. Hmm. She said she couldn't breathe. But these are the type of things <laughs> that goes up all, all, all the time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't trust it anyways because no. things you can buy without prescription in Colombia. Now, do they have, let, let me ask you a question. Do they have um, like social services there? Like women that, okay, like I know a woman that got two kids. She has two boys. If a woman is not working, do they have like, like here we have food stamps, bridge cards and things to help them buy food? Mm -mm. They don't have nothing like that. No. If you don't have money to take care of your kids, you will have to give them at least temporarily to the government. Oh, wow. To take care of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how so there is no in Colombia there is no savior. Mm -mm. You could be a single mother. Or, uh, that's why we say the men is the provider because the um, 
it's more difficult to women to get into power positions. That's why we say the Colombians are like, they, the psychologists sometimes say that Colombia have the superwoman syndrome. Because uh, if you don't pay child support, you are not going to go to jail. They took away that law. If you are a man who doesn't pay child support, you are not going to go to jail. And then no garnish your paycheck or nothing like that. You have to pay child support before you used to pay with jail if you didn't pay it. Now you are you are not punished that way. Oh, wow. And then the woman has to work, has to take care of the kids and has to do everything. So, and also it's difficult for a woman to get a job, especially when it's like mostly men working. So, <clears throat> It's very competitive. And if you are busy taking care of the kids, cleaning and doing everything, it's more difficult to find a job. So in those terms, that's why in the Colombian thinking, men has to be the provider. Men has way better opportunities than women. Okay. And if you have a child, that's why you, I don't know if you saw, but in Colombia, yes, you may be a young mother sometimes, but we often don't have more than two kids. Yeah, she said, so what, what I'm saying is she has two kids. She doesn't have a job, so how she's paying rent? You gotta pay, we still gotta pay rent. We still gotta pay, you know, bills and stuff. So how so she lives with more people in the house? She said she, don't know. I don't know. You she don't know she, her in person. Uh, yeah. Sometimes that's why we live in Colombia. We usually live with our parents until we get married and the household will have several incomes. So if you are not married, uh, you will have a husband or a boyfriend or whatever that is living with you. And you will have your parents, your brothers, your sisters, like several people living in the same okay, house. Gotcha. So she's living with somebody that is she. She has to be, if she's not working. We don't know. If you don't know her, that's why it's important to know people in person. Mm -hmm. Well, I seen her person, I cheat. When, when I go out to Columbia, she comes to visit me. But you haven't go visit her. No, I haven't go to her place. But she comes to me to the hotel. You don't, you don't know. You, they could be even living with the husband there and the husband agree mm -hmm. that she <laughs> yeah, that's true. gets money from foreign. You don't know. That's true. And in Colombia, we do take it a lot on women. Like, if you know you have a hard financial uh, life, why would you have a second kid? Why? It's, it's not like in USA, you may have a savior, and even in USA, it's difficult sometimes, you know, but mm -hmm. in Colombia, you are or with your family or by yourself. So that's why I, uh, uh, that's why I asked you if you saw in Colombia that you may see pregnant woman, right? But most of Colombians, most of Colombians, we don't have more than two kids. Yes, she has two. Yeah, but we we usually have, I'm asking you, have you seen have you seen women often in Colombia with more than two kids? Um, no, usually one or two, two at the most. Two at the most. We uh -huh. don't tend to have so many kids because we are like we already know it's difficult. Why it's difficult. Would, wow. Why would you do that to yourself? So the ones that so the ones that live in perpetual poverty, like we was talking about the other day, what usually what? happens? To perpetual poverty, you know what I'm saying? Not being able to go to school or afford to go to school. The one that's um, like you said, it's really hard for them. I mean, the ones that don't go to school, what do they end up? Do? I mean, what do you do in a situation like that? Well, we, if, if you can always access to a school, to a public school. A public school, okay, okay. We even have public university, so they will still charge you, but way less. 
Okay. Um, that according to what you earn, right? And um, yeah, according to what you earn, you will be charged, but you have to compete with more people, definitely. So you have to do your best on, on the test of admission. And if you have to pay for your education way more, we also have the student's loans. Or if you are a very good student, they forgive part of your student loan or you can even get a scholarship depending on your performance. Okay. So there are always options. You just have to be eager to do it and take the time to do it. To do that. Okay. To get education, you know. Mm, so it, it is possible. But for her, I mean, she will have to find a way. But if, for a woman, it could be very tough in Colombia to find a job. I, I don't know if you saw, it was like four years ago. A mm -hmm. woman had a kid with cancer. He, ha he was like seven, eight years old. That was pretty sad case. She was desperate in depression because she didn't have a job. Okay. And she was drowning in debt. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, right. She was drowning in debt. She could not pay the rent. And then she took the decision to go to a bridge with his kid. The kid was trying all the time to convince her not to jump. And the police and the people was there. And at the end, she jumped with her kid and both died. Oh, wow. Sorry. Everyone was crying. That was documented on video. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's very difficult. That's why I also feel offended when they criticize here to single mothers, to be honest. Like, like if you are a single mother, you, your life is over. Like, no, it's not over. It's more difficult. And then the society is making it more difficult for that woman to that actually wants to succeed you know? right that's why that's why i help some because my grandfather taught me one you know what one time her name is susie that's one of my special friends in managing and i know that she's been having a very hard time trying to raise two boys by herself you know what i'm saying and my grandfather always taught me you never turn your back on nobody one day I was sleeping and I got a message came through my phone and she sent me a picture and the picture she sent me was like she was at her very, very last, very last. Matter of fact, I'm going to see that picture. And when I looked at the picture on my phone, I was like, oh my God, you can just tell the look on her eyes like she just wanted to, she actually gave up, you know. She said she didn't have no food. The kids don't have nothing to eat. You know what I'm saying? And she stay, where she stays at, she stays in a room. I've been to her room before. She stays in the room. She has um, just a mattress on the floor underneath a cardboard where her and her kids sleep on. I saw this from all eyes. You know what I'm saying? And from time to time, I do say, you know, I, I know I've been in Colombia multiple times. I know how difficult it is there. I, I, I do. I understand all how difficult it is there. And like I said, they don't have what we have here in the States. They don't have Section A. They don't have, because here we have, the women here have Section A. They have welfare. They have um, bridge cards. You know, the government puts money on the card and you can go to the store and buy food with them. I don't know if you've ever seen those before. For people that don't work. But well, we have that in the United States. You know, so we here, let me just put it like this. In the States, you have you have uh, options where you can go if a woman doesn't have a job or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? They have programs to get into. But in Colombia, it's like all oh, man for himself. Every man's for himself. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's why you have to become a street smart because. Mm -hmm. 
and you have to move fast to leave because how old are her kids? Eight, eight years old and 12 years old. They are little still. Yeah. Yeah, she's been, she's been like struggling since I know her. And you know what? I should make, um, I should make more videos on my account and do like a GoFundMe for that because, yeah, the, they did it, you know, because I'm, I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to tell you something. When I go to Colombia, if I post, because I do use Facebook, I do, because, you know, um, I have to, you know, I got people on my job I communicate with and with my, um, my channel and stuff like that. It's connected with my Facebook. But if I go to Colombia and post a picture of me with someone that they know that I'm there, my phone just goes completely crazy. They'd be calling, 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 calling. Oh, you're in Colombia. Oh, can I come and see you? Oh, what you doing? What you doing? I mean, it, it, it's like, it's like constant. I would have to turn the phone Yeah, on. like it's, it's overwhelming when people want money in Colombia. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right. Yeah. They want I, money. Um, I even had a lady in the past, I saw her on the news, mm -hmm. on, the, on Caracol. Right and she was needing money because they were gonna cut the power in her home mm -hmm. um, to provide energy for for her son her son was dependent on energy to mm -hmm. to live to have life support mm -hmm. and he needed oxygen and the oxygen there is expensive like they don't sell like those machines that creates their own oxygen for patients is very expensive. Very expensive, and yes. People tend to buy the tanks, but the tanks can only last few hours, right? And then I saw it and then I started to I I sent her money, right? And then I see that she was like looking at my histories on whatsapp and everything and i see her histories too so it seems like she was helped but she was constantly asking me for money mm -hmm. and it was her his husband and she already had a, a like a tank of food of food uh so she was asking me and then the pandemic came mm -hmm. I'm sorry, like I helped oh, you that time, okay. but I cannot help you more because I don't even have for myself. I remember in that time in the pandemic, yeah, I was a waitress and then we all got fired and received 200 for a week. <laughs> but thanks goodness I had savings it, because I don't go out to party or nothing. So I had savings. Right, right. You got to save for a rainy day, yeah. Yeah, so I say for uh, three months, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly what I have. And then that's how I could, but I mean like um, the, the lady, and even I could, and even like that, my some of my services were cut, but I, I had to tell her like, I have my own difficulties here. Like I did it in that time. I wasn't expecting the pandemic or anything. She said, no, it's because I like more because like that, I don't have to take out the car to go to work, mm -hmm. like to sell the empanadas and the yucas. And I'm like, dude, like, like, seriously, like you already got help. You have your husband at home. He can mm -hmm. help you mm -hmm. while you go out to work in the evening. Like I said, I cannot anymore. And I have to block her because it was very tiring very tiring i think during the pandemic was the worst time for colombia when they did the shutdowns when they shut everything oh that was oh my god that was bad yeah it was pretty bad and then they they were conversations of the politicians saying oh we have this amount of uh, food or money to buy food for the people 
but it's okay. We can take this portion of money anyways. A, a poor person can have the two months without food. Two months without food. Wow. So they were taking advantage even more of the poorest. So yeah, it's like it's difficult to discern. Also in South America, they think that in USA they money just out of the tree. Yeah. They do. They yeah. do. So it's it's crazy. But yeah, it's yeah. Well, I'm not gonna hold you too much longer. I, I okay. thank you. I thank you for coming on the show today. And do you have any last words before you leave about scopolamine and how to protect yourself and what foreigners should do? And that's it. Yes, just don't don't invite problems into your home. Uh, if you have like try to hang out with people that you already know. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to know the Colombian people, I will. The last place I ask you to go is to a club. Okay. Uh, just go and enjoy doing other activities like doing our, uh, like less taking lessons of dancing or Spanish or I don't know, learn a new skill in the country. Um, but don't don't spend it like like going to party no that's crazy or inviting strangers to your home right yeah don't do that just keep yourself safe like the same things that you will do in your country do it uh, do it there yeah that's it that's it i stay in my i stay in my um my hotel room <laughs> i don't go out to the clubs or anything like that you know and they keep me safe at that hotel too don't, yes. need, don't allow you to bring one gas at a time. <laughs> Say two. Yeah, and, and if you have now, like, also don't focus on just dating someone. No, no, no. You're no. saying from the opposite gender. Mm -hmm. uh, try your best to do friends from your same gender. Mm -hmm. And this is something good about Colombians. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you okay. get to have friends of your same gender, we like people who try to speak us in Spanish. We like to teach and share with them and listen to their experience. Okay. Uh, and also, if you are a, even if you are a woman, we don't have that competition of oh, you are more beautiful than me. We don't have that. Is People don't know, or, or the women from other countries don't know, but it's actually very easy to be friend of another Colombian female. Yes, it is. Yeah, they're very, you know, who are very nice to me. I enjoy talking to is the Uber drivers. They are so nice. The Colombian Uber drivers, you know, they, they talk to you and stuff. And I mean, they, we have a conversation where we're going somewhere. But the, I've, I've got the people, you know what, like you said, if you go down there for the right intentions, you'll be okay. Yes. If you go down there to the wrong intentions, bad things will happen. And that's why I try to tell them. Yeah, it, it could happen something bad. So it's better to go, like, you visit places, usually it's not because of the structures. You visit places because of its people. But the people, right? right? Right. So take advantage of, if it's in Colombia in particular, take advantage that you can make friends of people of your same gender believe me if you make friends of people of your same gender you will open the opportunities to have a friend that knows how you think as a man or knows how you think as a woman and they will introduce you their friends right they right they will right. want to introduce you the good friends they have they don't want to introduce you the trash they know right. as colombians i know how we are classes and so we like to introduce the best friends we have. We, yeah. we don't tend to introduce uh, friends that we don't like. We tend to introduce not like nice people, you know? So if you make friends of your same gender, I think that you will have way more advantage to be safe. Okay. To enjoy the experience. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Anita, thank you so much for coming on the show. 
And you know, I'm always here for you if you ever want to talk about anything or call me if you need anything. You know that, don't you? Nope. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank from you, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I hope to hear from you before Christmas to see how you're doing and everything. Tell your son I say hello, okay? Oh, yes. He's so snoring. <laughs> <laughs> so he's snoring. <laughs> I just snore. I just snore. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I, I think I snore sometimes too. <laughs> okay. All right, then, my sister, thank you very much for coming on. And um, oh, I told everyone to subscribe to your channel too. Her channel is at the description, so make sure you like and subscribe to her channel. And uh, what they subscribing the last time I did an interview with you today, did you get any more subscribers? I haven't checked if I get any more subscribers, but I definitely got more comments. Oh, you got more comments. So oh, okay. Yes, no, yes. no. Thank you so much. No, no. Thank you. Thank you.